This is the left scapula. This is the right scapula. You're looking at these two bones as if you were looking at someone's back. This would be their left shoulder. This would be their right shoulder. Let's take a look at the parts of each of the scapula, and then I'll come back and explain to you how to tell left from right. As I said, this is the posterior view of the scapula. What you're seeing is the spine of the scapula. The end of the spine of the scapula expands, and it's known as the acromion process. This is the acromion process. Below the spine of the scapula, this fossa is known as the infraspinous fossa. Above the spine of the scapula, superior to it, is another fossa, supraspinous fossa. We also name various edges of this bone. This is the inferior angle, the medial border, the superior angle, and the lateral border. The medial border, when this bone is in position, is close to the vertebrae. The lateral border is closer to the armpit. If we look at the anterior surface of this bone, we'll see it's very smooth. This is the surface that rests against the muscles that cover the rib cage. This fossa is called subscapularis fossa, contains subscapularis muscle. In addition, in this view, you can also see a second process, an important process. This is the coracoid process. As I said, this is the acromion process. This is the joint surface of the shoulder joint. This is the glenoid cavity or glenoid fossa. So how do we know that this is the left scapula? The first thing to think about is the fact that this smooth surface has to rest against the rib cage. That makes this the anterior or the deep surface if you're standing behind a person. So this is resting against the rib cage. This is the joint surface of the shoulder joint. It has to face laterally, away from the person's midline. If you're looking at the posterior surface, you see the spine. It's covered with muscles. So this is the left scapula.